Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 197. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about what company should buy Twitter. But first, have you checked out the Creating Wealth podcast yet with Jason Hartman? It's full of amazing information and over 700 podcasts about real estate investing. If you like this podcast, you'll like that one too. Well, Twitter's been in the news as a company that's for sale recently. And apparently other companies like Google, Yahoo, Salesforce.com, Disney, and many others have been taking a look at it and giving the tires an old kick. In my humble opinion, I think it belongs with a media company because Twitter is the next form of media after radio and TV. As I mentioned in my previous podcast about the DDoS cyber attack, I found out about it because Twitter was down and I eventually Googled it. That's the way we think now. I didn't go immediately to the TV. It was actually my fourth choice for news after Twitter then going to Facebook, then going to Google, and then I went to the mainstream media on television. Interestingly, they weren't reporting anything about it, so the most relevant source was actually Google. Twitter is really the first two-way media that we've ever had, meaning you can get instant feedback from viewers. For example, Bravo TV uses Twitter really effectively. They use it to take polls on their show so they can find out, for example, vote for who's your most popular or least popular person. They also use it online to gather questions to ask in interviews. So if Andy Cohen is going to do an interview, He'll say, what do you want me to ask this person? And he'll use social media, Twitter, and Facebook to get the answers and to get the questions to ask those people. They also will post tweets in real time right on the TV screen. So you can see how people are responding and what they're saying right away in real time. You know, it's really interesting now because Twitter is such a form of media. It used to be that information would come into a TV station, the people at the station would sit around the table, figure out all the stories they wanted to work on, write the stories, and go and deliver them out to the world. It was very centralized and very controlled. Now, everything is in real time. So people are tweeting real time from around the world what's going on in the world. We saw that with Arab Spring, with an uprising. We saw that people were tweeting online in real time. I saw it with an earthquake that I went through here in Southern California. And immediately after the earthquake, I went on to Twitter to see what people were saying about it. If they were hurt, if there was any damage, how extensive the damage was and how strong the earthquake was. I found all of that immediately on Twitter, and the mainstream media didn't cover it for a long time after that. So you can really get your real-time news by going to Twitter, and I find that it is what people are thinking about. It's real time what people are talking about. And I love to go there, see what hashtags are trending, and see what people are saying. It's also a source of comic relief because there's so many humorous things that people are writing on Twitter. Sometimes I just laugh out loud at some of the things that people come up with. They're so creative and so funny. It's just amazing. I remember the first time I saw Twitter and I went to Twitter, I thought it was really crazy and I didn't really understand it. Someone had tweeted about what they ate for breakfast that day and I thought, why do I care about what he had for breakfast? It just seemed to be so absurd. 
after that, I got kind of used to it. And then I started using it as a business tool where I would post blogs and podcasts. And I still do. I still post quotes and memes and different things that I find, other people's content, my content. I try to make it a very content-rich place. But people are also using it as a media platform. Twitter also owns a company called Periscope. And Periscope is where anyone can be broadcasting live and can basically be their own TV station. Then it gets tweeted out to all of your followers on your Twitter list. So I've seen people use this very effectively to literally have thousands of people follow them on a regular basis. And then they've used it to market books and their business and other things. And it's been incredibly successful for them. The reason I bring all this up is I think Twitter should be bought by a media company, either a TV station or maybe even a newspaper. It would fit perfectly with their objectives, and they could raise revenues by getting more advertising, and it would be the next phase of media in this technological age. If I were the investment banker on the deal, I'd pitch it hard to the Washington Post, which is also owned by Jeff Bezos, who also owns Amazon and is the second richest man in the U.S. It would be perfect for both the Washington Post and for Amazon. Think about it. You could be tweeting in real time about the products that you bought on Amazon, how great they were, how fast the delivery was. You could also be tweeting news stories and things that the Washington Post would be following. I think this is a match made in heaven, personally. Although there are rumors from time to time about who will or won't buy Twitter, the main problem is the $16 billion to $18 billion valuation. It's very richly valued, and although I think it will be worth much more in the future, not everyone wants to shell out that much cash. But personally, I think it would be a much better buy than the $26 billion that Microsoft just paid for LinkedIn, but we'll have to wait to see if I'm right about that. Whomever buys it seems to be waiting for the price to drop some more, I think. But I do also think when the price is right, a buyer will step up to the plate and snatch it up. Have you gotten your 11 quick financial tips to boost your wealth yet? Get your net worth moving in the right direction. Go to my website, lindapjones.com, and get my free report. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.